Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with, the main points in a nutshell. Pakistan elections, Nawaz Sharif set for victory. Turkey wants a response after Syria border town bombs. Cambridge based scientists develop super wheat. Bulgaria holds open in parliamentary election. India Congress ministers quit amid scandals. Another news in detail. Pakistan election Nawaz Sharif set for victory. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is celebrating with his supporters amid early signs that his party will be largest after parliamentary elections. Media projections based on partial results suggest a big lead for Mr. Sharif's Muslim League and he has already claimed victory. The election should lead to country's first transition from elected government to another. The turnout was huge but the poll was marred by violence. In Karachi, the Pakistan Taliban said they planted a bomb which killed 11 people and wounded 40 others. The bomb was placed outside the office of the Awami National Party. There were also attacks in Baluchistan and northwestern city of Peshawar. Thank Allah, an election commission spokesman said they hoped for a turnout of 60 to 80 percentage. In 2008, it was 44 percentage. No official results have yet been released, but unofficial partial results suggested that Mr. Sharif's party was ahead in more than 100 of the 272 directly elected parliamentary seats. It appears that Mr. Sharif's party may avoid the need from a coalition with other parties in the National Assembly. In a speech at his party headquarters in the northeastern city of Lahore, Mr. Sharif said that the Muslim League PMLN was sure to emerge as the largest party. We should thank Allah that he has given PMLN, Muslim League, another chance to serve you and Pakistan. I appeal for all parties to come to the table and sit with me and solve the country's problems. Turkey wants response after Syria border town bombs. Turkey says it will take necessary measure to protect itself after two car bombs kill at least 43 people in a town on its border with Syria. Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu vowed to cast those behind the attack in Rehanli, which is home to many Syrian refugees. Nothing will go unanswered, Mr. Davutoglu said. Turkey, a member of NATO, said it suspected the involvement of a Syrian intelligence agency, but Syria denied it was responsible. Turkey is a strong supporter of the opposition in Syria's civil war and a vocal critic of the government of President Bashar al-Assad. The US NATO have condemned the bombs and expressed support for Ankara. Speaking during a visit to Berlin, Mr. David Toglu said it was not a coincidence that the bombings occurred. Diplomatic efforts to solve the Syrian crisis were intensifying. There are many those who want to sabotage Turkey's peace, but we will not allow that, he said. No one should attempt to test Turkey's power. Our security forces will take all necessary measures. However, he said he saw no reason to call an emergency meeting of NATO. Such a meeting would be the first step towards involving the alliance in any possible response. Refugees attacked. Deputy Prime Minister Basir Atali said he believed the attacks were from Turkey but linked to a Syrian intelligence agency. We have established that the organization and the silence have links to the pro-regime Mukhabarat organization, intelligence organization, he told reporters. He did not name the group but said the attack was intended to pit Turks against Syrian refugees in Rehanli. But Syrian Information Minister Amran al-Zubi told news conference on Sunday, no one has the right to make false accusations. Syria did not commit and would never commit such an act because our values would not. 
The Cambridge-based National Institute of Agriculture Botany has combined an ancient ancestor of wheat with a modern variety to produce a new strain. In early trials, the resulting crops seem bigger and stronger than the current modern wheat varieties. It will take at least five years to test and regulatory approval before it is harvested by farmers. Some farmers, however, are using new initiatives between the food industry, scientists and government. They believe the regulatory process needs to be speeded up to ensure that the global food security demands of the next few decades can be met, says reporters. Primitive grains, one in five of all calories consumed around the world come from wheat. But despite steady improvement in the late 20th century, the last 15 years have seen little growth in the average wheat harvest from each acre in Britain. Just last month, cereal maker Weedabix announced that it would have to scale back production of some of its products due to poor wheat harvest in the UK. Now, British scientists think they may have found the answer to increasing productivity again. The scientists used cross-pollination and seed embryo transfer technology to transfer some of the resilience of the ancient ancestor of wheat into modern British varieties. The process required no genetic modification of the crops.